All right, I think uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Kamilie Kule. I go by EK. I'm one of the detectives here in Clayton. Uh, I'm not one of those that come to your house if you die now or one, but <laughs> kind of like behind the, the dark scene. Uh, so you won't see me quite often. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm one of the detectives here. It's my, my dearest friends from uh, IRS criminal investigations. I worked a lot with him closely. Uh, he's gonna get a chance to talk to you guys today. Uh, and this is Mr. Morgan. He's the manager of uh, 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 State Employees Credit Unions in town. Uh, we are so happy to have you guys with us today. And welcome to the Clayton Police Department, your department. Uh, <clears throat> Few reminders, that's the door right there in case of emergency. You're at the, at the police department, but <laughs> in case we should have emergency, that will be the door right there and we'll exit and we'll cross you know, to that parking lot and we'll meet over there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dispersed. <laughs> now, this, uh, these double doors right here, you open it, you have two bathrooms there, one for men, one for women. Uh, you cannot go out that way, you're gonna have to come back this way and go out this way. Uh, again, we're so happy to have you. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about me, uh, you know, I'm originally from Togo, West Africa. I came down to the US in 2012. Uh, I, I served in the military. Uh, I, I've been in law enforcement for about six years now. Uh, I, I don't like telling about myself, but I'm saying this because, you know, <clears throat> A lot of things we're gonna to talk to you guys about today uh, will kind of fall back to certain things like some of the people might be from, you know, outside of this country, in other countries. Uh, they might come out and say, hey, you know, I'm in the military, I can't, I can't call you, my phone is, you know, script or whatever. You know, all those stuff, we've heard those kind of stories and, and you can, feel comfortable asking me or these guys those questions because we have those experiences already. So uh, we're gonna get started. Uh, we have a little short video we're gonna play for you guys and then, uh, and then I'll come back and we'll get started. You work hard to keep your hard-earned money safe, but investment scammers use money tricks to take your money and vanish without a trace. Before buying into any investment, look out for these warning signs. Scammers will urge you to use a credit card, increase your credit limit, or pay with multiple credit cards. They may also ask you to wire money abroad or to a personal account. Don't stay in the dark about where your money is going, because if the investment turns out to be a scam, you may never see your hard-earned money again. Before signing up for any investment opportunity, protect yourself, do your research, and invest wisely. Learn more at Investor.gov. Before you invest, Investor.gov. All righty. <clears throat> So today, uh, we want to talk to you guys about fraud. Uh, <clears throat> we're having a lot of issues with frauds right now. Uh, and every day we get calls, people come to the police department and say, hey, somebody you know, took this X amount of money from me. You know, uh, uh, you know I, I'm trying to rent a house and you know, this guy let me go look at the house and then I pay him this you know, X amount of money and he's gone. Uh, <clears throat> so we wanna talk to you guys about it and pretty much raise the awareness and, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to stop some of these guys. Uh, be, but we also want you to feel comfortable that if you are victim at any point, you need to feel comfortable calling us, talking to us. It might be hard to find out who they are. You might be able to bring them to justice, but we sure can try. We can try. I want to make that clear. We can always try. And don't be ashamed about it. Uh, but please, please call us. So we're going to go through a little presentation here. <clears throat> so what is fraud? Fraud is the intentional deception to cause a person to give up property or some lawful right. Uh, <clears throat> and then, you know, sometimes people use... Uh, Larceny, you know, larceny is just 
a theft, but it's, those are two different things. A theft is, is if you have this water and I just take it from you, I physically deprive you from that, and my goal is that I'm not gonna return it from you. I'm taking it permanently. That's a theft. But a fraud, big word, is deception. Uh, my goal is to deceive you. I'm telling you, look, we're buddies. Give me that water. And then you give it to me. You believe me, you give it to me. Then after that, I disappear. That's, so for this presentation today, we're going to be talking about scam because that's who they are. They are scammers. <clears throat> so we have uh, a lot a lot of type of uh, scams, but we're going to talk about the ones that we see here in Clayton quite often, and then we're going to dive into certain ones that we see that goes into, you know, uh, my friend over there with the federal government. Uh, he and I work uh, some big cases, and we go on and on and on for months and months and months and months, a lot of readings, and we start growing, growing gray hair and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, that's what we get paid to do. And we'll, we like doing it, so we'll keep on doing it just to help you. Uh, <clears throat> so we have a counterfeit check, scam, charity, online purchase, auction, tech support, family emergency, sweepstakes, uh, online dating, and imposters. <clears throat> so counterfeit scam. What is counterfeit scam? It's a scam where somebody sent you a check. Say, uh, I make $10,000 check. It's a fake check. I just write it. And I mail it to you. Say, hey, uh, what, what is your name, ma'am? Sandra. Miss Sandra, what is your address? And then I send it to you. You get it. And I say, you know what? Go put it into your bank. And then you go. Because you believe me, you go put it to your bank. And then I say, you know what, Miss Sandra? Why don't you withdraw that 10000 and send it to me through Cash App or something? And then you do. Two days later, State Employees Credit Union called you say, that check bounced. Guess who's responsible for that now? <laughs> Miss Sandra is. So <clears throat> that's the counterfeit check. Uh, and... It happens all the time. You know, we get those calls all the time. Uh, so that's uh, a canopy check scam. Charity fraud. I'm sure everybody here likes Clayton High School or Boy Scout, right? Or, you know, what's the big church in town? You know, the church up here. <clears throat> Or oh, the town hall. Well, if I say I'm raising money for, uh, for a Boy Scout in town, I'm sure I'll get a lot of people out here to give me, you know, $5,000, I mean, $5, if you have it, right? Or just $50,000, $50, whatever. <clears throat> but the money, it's not actually going to that company. I'm just running my own show, but I'm, I figure that if I say Boy Scout, a lot of people in Clayton like Boy Scout, so they're going to give their money. So what do, I, what, what do I do? I create a fake number, whatever, fake site. I make it all legit, and then you donate the money. I collect $10,000, and then I run away. So sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes they will even pressure you, say, hey, if, if you donate, you become uh, uh, one of the, the, the people on the Hall of Fame. Is that how they call it? Hall of Fame. You, you're going to be you know, one of the, the big presidents and all that stuff. Try to convince you. That's their goal, to try to convince you to donate. Because when, once they are able to convince you and you, you, you give up that money, it's over. They've accomplished their job. Now you're in a hole because you've already given it to them. So <clears throat> we have online purchase scam. And nowadays, everybody purchases online, right? You know, you see Kmart is closing, all this stuff. So everybody's just buying online. Amazon, every day, you see the trucks everywhere. And how often do you have, have has anybody gotten that, that text before? Yeah, almost everybody. 
Yeah, <laughs> I, I get it too. We all get it. I get it on my, my uh, department of phone, my police phone. I get it on it too. You know, he Me gets too. it on, on his my government, fe phone. government, federal government phone. He gets, gets it on his bank phone. We all get it. Those are things we need to look at, we need to look for. And then he asks you, hey, your, your Amazon package is going to be delivered today, or it, it has been delivered. And then you click on it, guess what? Boom. All your information, because guess what? You've been shopping. Your, your debit card, credit card is saved on your phone and all that stuff. You click on it, boom. So when I see it, what do I do? I just delete it. So online <laughs> purchase. Uh, sometimes it's called uh, overpayment scam. You know, like if, I, if I'm selling something, I'm selling shoes, I post it for $100. And uh, Miss Sandra likes the shoes, and she goes out there trying to uh, buy it. You know, I can uh, offer, I will send her a check, fake check, for 150 and then, but the shoes is $100. So then I ask her, hey, can you just send me the, uh, the remaining balance? Like the $50? The shoes is $100. I sent her 150 Can you send me the, that 50 back? She sent, when, whenever she sent me that 50 back, that's my money. She ain't got nothing because that's a fake check. So that's what you call overpayment scam or wire transfer. You know, I ask you, hey, can you just wire me the $100 for the shoes? And, oh, yeah, yeah, I wire you the $100. And then you go to the bank, you get the wire, you send it to me for $100, and then I disappear. No shoes, no money. I disappear. So that's a wire transfer. And we're going to talk more about wire transfer when we get to another phase where uh, uh, Agent Daly and I will talk to you guys more about, you know, what we've seen people wiring, like, a big amount of money. We're talking about a big amount of money. Uh, so wire transfer, look, I... I have friends all over the country. Uh, I, I still have my family back home. I don't wire anybody money. That's just me. Uh, or at the very least, I got to know who you are. So, because <clears throat> I've worked hard for my money. I'm just not going to send it to you if I don't know you. So. And I can tell you all that. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, with wire transfers, uh, with wire transfers, I mean that's cash. Once it's gone, it's gone. Just keep that in mind. So there's, uh, you want to make sure you know exactly who that's going to if you ever are doing it. But it's like Ek was saying, it's turning into old technology. Not as many people are using it, but a lot of scammers request it. Thank you. Yeah. So a lot of those, they're, they're, they're very, very hard to track back. Uh, you know. If, if you willingly sent this guy, let's say $100,000, you wire it to him. That's basically cash that you've sent to this guy, and he withdraws it, and it's, it's over. You know? But again, if that happens, hopefully that won't happen. But if that happens, call us as soon as possible. You know, we can certainly try, uh, but don't, don't be afraid. Don't, don't be ashamed. To call us. So second chance scam. So when a legitimate purchaser uh, loses a, a, a bid, who bids on items online? I do. I like shoes, so I bid on shoes. <laughs> I bid on shoes all the time. <laughs> Miss Sandra, yes, I bid on shoes all the time. <laughs> so. I go online, I find a shoe, $90, and I'm bidding for it, bidding for it, bidding for it, and then I lose it. So a scammer might copy that same shoe that somebody posted for sale and create his own post for $70. So then he reached out to me and said, no, you won. 
you want the bid for seventy dollars, but the shoes are all it's for ninety dollars, right? Seventy dollars. Guess why it's cheaper? So I fall for it. Yes, I'll take your offer. I pay him the seventy dollars. Guess what? Seventy dollars gone because no shoes. He's not the legitimate seller. So. You know, when you bid online, you got to watch out for stuff like that. It's okay to bid online, but, you know, when people ask you, you know, if, if, you, if you lost, you've lost. You know, uh, I'll go find some, some, something else, another shoes to bid on, you know. Uh, rental scam. We get those all the time in town. You know, you guys know Clayton is very uh, growing fast and, you know, a lot of people are coming down, and uh, a lot of the, the market is good. People are renting their houses. But w what we've seen happen is if I post my house for rent, and Mr. Morgan, uh, he's not a scammer, but if he's the scammer, he will see my post, then he'll go create a fake Facebook page or Craigslist or any of these uh, places then he'll copy my, my post and post it on his fake page. If my house was going for 2000 his would be going for 1500 Which one is going to draw more attention? 1500 So they, they call him. He'll make arrangement. You know, through these, some of these companies, you can just, you know, use your credit card and pay $1 to get the code to get in. He can get that code. Get in, then he pass it off to me. Say, hey, go look at the house right now. I go out there, look, look, look at the house. Okay, send me three thousand first month and deposit. He gets that three thousand, he's gone. You move into the house. <clears throat> I think we've we've had a call like a couple of days ago. You move into the house. Next thing you know, who is this? That's the actual renter. Who are you? Oh, I'm the renter. No, I didn't rent to you. So we see those all the time. That's another type of scam. We've so, had that with the uh, um, credit union. We do rental. We have rental houses, and uh, um, the we've had it before where we've gone to the house when it's you know we're trying to list it and everything, and there's people already living in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean they're good at what they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's serious. It happens all the time. Just a side note, too, here about Craigslist. I, maybe I'm out of touch, but I don't know of anybody recently who's actually sold something on Craigslist that isn't fraudulent. I, maybe, maybe you all know something different than I do, but Craigslist has a lot of fraud. You know, and unless you're looking to uh, hire somebody to, to murder someone for you or something like that, I'd, <laughs> I'd stay away from Craigslist. I'd, I think one time in my life I've listed something on Craigslist and the only solicitation I got from people trying to buy it were people trying to do like overpayment scams like EK just mentioned. So I think Craigslist has uh, gone in the, the wrong direction lately. So, <laughs> so I'd, I'd just stay away from it, just my personal opinion. Yeah, well, you know, these things happen all the time. I remember when I was working in Greensboro, I was looking for a puppy for my, my little girl. She was one at the time. And uh, I found this little puppy on Facebook uh, in Richmond, Virginia. And the guy uh, texted me. He said, uh, you know, send me the money. Uh, no, he said, send me this X amount of money. I will ship the dog to you. <laughs> and, and, and then he just kept going, kept going. So I took a picture of myself in my uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and then I sent it to him. And that was done. <laughs> that was the end of the conversation. So, you know, I was lucky that. I'm sorry. You didn't get that puppy. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I knew there was no puppy. The puppy was, so <laughs> the puppy was gonna be my money, but it wasn't. It was my picture. So. Uh, so get yeah. a picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work too. <laughs> Not in this, but you know, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, just watch out for things like that. Uh, Tech support scam. Who in here has a computer? Oh, cell phone. Everybody has a cell phone. 
So we get this all the time where people call you and they say, hey, your Apple computer has been hacked. I want to fix it for you. Uh, give me your email. Whatever. <laughs> they, again, remember the word deceive. Deception, that's, that's what they use. They will try their best to convince you. And if they are able to convince, convince you, you give them any of your personal information, they're gone. So these people, we get it all the time. I get, I get it on my, my work phone, my personal phone, my computer. They call me. I say, well, you know, give me, give me your, your password. I say, if you, you know, you're calling me about it. You know, what kind of computer do you have? I said, you're calling me about it. I thought you knew. You know, these people, because they know when you shop online, what, do you, what is saved on your computer? It's your, your credit card, your debit card information. You use it to log in, your phone, and all this stuff. Your phone is connected. So they are trying their best to get access to that. And then once they have access to it, they have access to your credit card information and all that stuff, and they go use it at what we call dark web to buy other stuff, you know, take out a loan in your name. You know, we've had people call up here and say, hey, you know, all the bank calls say, hey, you know, this, this guy's credit card's being used, and then come to find out the person is in Florida, and they still have their credit card in their hands. How do they get the credit card? I don't know, but certainly the person who's been using it it's not in Clayton, it's not in North Carolina, it's in Florida, you know, and, and those things happen all the time. So you got to watch out for that too. You know, if somebody, if my computer's having an issue, I'll go to somebody who has a business, you know, to fix it for me. And then if, if he breaks it, I can at least go back to him. You know, if, if something, if, 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 if your credit card is compromised after that and you come to us, and you, you tell me as an investigator that, you know, that guy fixed my computer yesterday, that would be where I would start. You know, at least I, I have something to start with. But some random guy calling you on the phone, you don't know who he is. Uh, sometimes, you know, he, he hardly can speak English. You know, I would stay away. I would stay away. Family emergency scam. You know, you get called, say, hey, uh, your grandson, uh, Evan, your grandson, Evan, is being arrested. <clears throat> hey, uh, can, you, can you send $10,000 or, or he's not going to be able to get out? You may even ask, can I talk to my grandson? No, he's not able to talk right now. Then they get mad on the phone because you're asking too many questions. Well, don't you, don't you deserve to ask questions? It's your money. You worked for it. I've actually heard of some of these scams where they do supposedly put the grandchild on the phone and they're just uh, aggressive enough that they believe they can have you. If it's a male, a young male that maybe sounds enough like your grandkid or they, they sound panicked and you don't recognize their voice or you're panicked hearing they're in trouble and you don't even think, oh, that didn't quite sound like him. But it's, I mean, they're, it's, people are really good at these scams and they put a lot of thought into them and there's a lot of trial and error that lets them fine tune them and they, they know how to work people and play on emotions. And yeah, so sometimes they will let you talk to them. You know, a lot of those, there's uh, the, maybe the grandchild is, has social media and they are posting that they're over in the Bahamas or something along those lines. Uh, they don't have any kind of protection on their account. Um, scammers are seeing that. And they just look at their friend list, find it, and somehow link it up to that person. And they, they'll, they'll, they'll have their grandson's name. They're in the Bahamas and use that against them. Because we've had members come in frightened into, you know, and they, they're being told, they're directed, do not talk to anybody. Don't call the police. Don't tell anything that's going on. And just all you need to do is wire us this money. It's ransom. And they, they'll come in. We've had folks, like, shaking. They're so scared. And uh, when we try to get it out of them, I mean, they're, they're being told if they say anything, their grandchild's going to get killed. And it's, uh, and they're, like, they're saying that's, it, they're good at what they do. Yeah. And also, the grandparents putting it on Facebook, or putting yeah. it on Facebook, and they're following that. Right. And they're able to see. Right. Yeah, we've had, I had one, I went to Crate Union as well, and I had one probably two months ago when my long-time member came in just so upset. 
I mean, he, he was shaking, mm -hmm. like Morgan said. And, um, you know, after we talked it through, we figured out it was a scam. Right. And, and these people, they, they're good, like they said, but if, if somebody called you and said, you know, I've been doing this for a little bit now, nobody's going to, if, if any of your family member is arrested, they have a phone down there, it's their constitutional right to make a phone call, let their family know where they're at, they will call you. And that phone, that, that call will prompt you to go through certain things before you can talk to them, you know. If, if you doubt at any point, you can call the Clayton Police Department. You can give us your son's name and all that stuff, or you can call the jailer yourself. You know what, my son Evan is, is locked up. Hold on, let me call the jail real quick. I'll find out myself. You know, the jail can tell you, you know, things like that. It's not just the jail. Oh, your, son's, your, your grandson's car's broken down. If his car's broken down, who, who, whose responsibility it is to call you? It's his responsibility to call you, not somebody else, not a friend, not anybody, because not only it sounds fishy, it's also disrespectful for me to have somebody else call you to ask for money. I mean, wouldn't you think it's, 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 it's correct? Because if I'm going to ask you for money, I'll call you myself. I won't ask my friend James to call you for me, it doesn't work like that. So just think, you know, think about stuff like that. Uh, this is another one. You've won. You won $10,000. You won $100,000. Well, I, I didn't even play. I don't know what you're talking about. I thought you got to be in to win it. I, I don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, you've won. But the only requirement is you have to send me a $1,000 uh, uh, gift card or Apple Pay or whatever before you can get your $100. You know what my answer is when they call me? I say, okay, well, take that $1,000 out of the 100 and then send me the 99 <laughs> <laughs> They never do because you know what? They ain't got it because if they did, they would send it to me. You know, things like that you have to worry about. They, they call you, oh, you've won a vacation to Bahamas. You know, whatever. I didn't even apply for any vacation. It's good I have a vacation, but I'm not sending you any money. Take that out of however much you're paying me to go to, the, and then send me the rest of it. You know, and that would, that would basically just cut them off. They would, they would stop talking, you know. But they are there, uh, just watch out for that. This is a big one. I'm going to invite my friend uh, James to, 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 uh, to talk about this a little bit. We've seen a bunch of these lately, and we're talking about, we're not talking about 1,000, 2,000, 10,000. We're talking about hundreds of thousands. Yeah. All right, just leave it on the slide. Yeah. Okay, so, so these romance scams. Uh, when it comes to federal law enforcement, what's different about me from EK mainly is uh, a lot of times crimes that make their way all the way up to federal are much bigger dollars. They're, they're, they cross state lines. They have many more parties involved. And these romance scams are, are regularly getting to this level these days. And a lot of times they, they start off by you know, somebody locally believes they've been scammed and they report it to a local PD and then the local PD looks into it a little bit, realizes it's, it's crossing state lines, money may be going to other countries, uh, and people are out a whole lot of money. And that's when, a lot of times when the feds will get involved. But these, these online dating scams, a lot of people, specifically people that are, are widowed, uh, people that are lonely, just looking for some, some connection, uh, you know, people that just, just want somebody to talk to, uh, online dating websites, there's, there's a whole bunch of them out there, and just even social websites that may not even be uh, specifically dating. But a lot of people will, will use those, and uh, there's, there's a whole lot of scammers on there. The scammers will reach out to people. They'll start legitimate, seemingly legitimate connections. They'll, they'll talk to people. Uh, you know, they may claim to be a widow themselves. Uh, 
they'll say a lot of times they're they're from they're from your area. Of, you know, I'm from just a half hour away, or you know, I see you live in Clayton, I live in Raleigh, something like that. It's it's really easy for people right now to to fake areas, including uh, without getting too technical here. When somebody calls you from a phone number, just because it has the area code, like it has a 919 area code or something you recognize, it doesn't mean it's from there. There's numbers, uh, they're called voice over internet protocol numbers, and it's, uh, there, there's all these third parties out there that you could basically purchase a number, and you can put in the local area codes you want to. The legitimate purpose for those is for people to have free texting and free calling, and for you to have an area code that is local, so you could call local people. But Scammers will use those to make it seem like they're in your area. So everything looks good and you're talking, you may be talking for, for weeks to these people and you feel like you're really, you really making an actual connection, you're building a relationship. And they'll ask you about your, your family, they'll, they'll send you pictures, which most times isn't actually the person, but they, they may be convincing and sometimes they even look like they're local pictures. They may send you an address and it's a, uh, from what I've seen, a lot of times there'll be there'll be apartment buildings where it's really easy to hide in. I say, oh, I, I live in apartment 101 in this giant, you know, 500 unit apartment. Well, you're not going to be able to know. You know it's, it's it's not a it's not a house that you can look up the real estate records and say, oh, that person doesn't actually live there. So, but you know, it may all the story looks good, and uh, so you keep talking. They may talk for for weeks, and you really think you have a connection going with these people, and then all of a sudden they they have to move away. And uh, you know that's why you haven't been able to meet. They have some kind of job, job opportunity come up, and they have to go to uh, South Africa, and they're going to work on an oil rig. You know, maybe they're they're a uh, some kind of engineer or some kind of oil driller who's you know, been working here in the U.S. And <clears throat> they get this big job opportunity, and it's too big to pass up, and they go over to to South Africa, or they go to the Puerto Rico, or somewhere out in international seas, and. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a, they get into some, some major trouble. There's a construction accident, and, and people are hurt, and they need, you know, they've got this big contract, but they can't access the money yet until the contract is fulfilled. And, but they're in this legal trouble, and, you know, they're really in love with you, so they want to get back and be with you, and, there's, you know, they're, they're going to call, and they're, they're going to cry, and they're going to play the part really well. And, you know, I need fifty thousand dollars from you. I gotta, you know, th this guy died here. I'm in legal trouble. They're gonna put me in jail. I need to pay my way out of this, or I need supplies to keep my job going. Or the uh, the IRS, I owe them tax money, and I can't I can't continue to work on my contract to make my money because the IRS shut down the job site, and I need to pay this so I can keep working to make money. I can make money, and we can get married, and we can have a good life. But these people. They're they're really good, and uh, you know, like I said, they'll they'll spoof phone numbers. They'll they have emails that look like their real names. They have fake passports that look like look like legitimate passports from you know, other countries or from your country. Whatever those they'll have these really elaborate stories, and and their stories are really good. There's people sometimes they'll bring in alternate uh, maybe their boss or something like that, and they'll have you talk to their boss to make it legitimate, and you know that boss you'll send money through the boss to them and bring in all these other parties or they'll introduce you over the phone to a son or daughter and you know, build this whole persona. Uh, other times, other times these people will, uh, you know, it's, it's always some sort of trouble that they get into that, that elicits money. And by that point, you know, they've, they promised to marry you and sometimes people will, will play this for, for months before they even get into these scams. But, they get they get so good that the victims I talk to in these situations, well, once they know they've been scammed, they see all these red flags, all these things that didn't make sense. But when you're so when you really believe that person loves you and you love them, it it's it's hard to uh, it's hard to see past those. And what really happens is when that money gets sent, a lot of times these are large organized crime groups, and they're they're basically you know, they could be terrorist organizations and they're they're outside the country they target they have handlers and these are people whose sole professional job for the day is is to handle handle their victims so they'll just you know, basically romance people and work these work these relationships and I've had victims say to me well there's no way this person can't be real or he's talking to other people he spends you know, he sends me 50 texts a day he calls me three times well that's his job just 
just like you know, ours is, is to do this and work investigations. That's what they do 40 hours a week or more. Uh, but this money that gets sent a lot of times, what victims don't realize is they're, they are aiding in money laundering or terrorist financing. And you are helping an organized crime group conceal their money by <laughs> sending money for them. And most times they'll ask to have money put into cryptocurrency. And bad guys think that we can't trace cryptocurrency. Well, they're wrong. We can, and we're getting, we're getting really good at it lately. And uh, it's, but I, I know, you know many of you have probably never used cryptocurrency. Uh, maybe some of you have now. It's, it's becoming a little bit more legitimate, but people will put, they'll instruct you to put money in a cryptocurrency. They'll instruct you to wire money. And you know, once it's gone, it's gone. But people I've heard of victims will refinance their houses and they will give away every cent they have. They refinance their houses to get money. They'll take out personal loans. They'll sell assets. They'll give away an entire inheritance. They'll sell additional property they have, empty their 401k accounts. And a lot of times that, that money is really hard to get back. So the, the premise of all that is be careful, be very careful talking to people. We've had multiple victims just around this area that have been connected to really large rings of, like I said, organized crime groups and things like that. So it, it can happen locally. And on the internet, you can access anybody in any part of the world and they can do the same thing. These people, you know, just because you live in a, a small town somewhere, even if there's, you know, there's 10 people in your town, that doesn't mean that you're immune to being targeted by these groups. And it's, it sounds scary and, and it is, but it's, it's something, you know, if, if you are, dating somebody, number one, if they don't have any immediate plans to meet you, it probably doesn't really make sense. I mean, I, having dinner with somebody initially, be, before you ask me to send you $300,000, you should probably <laughs> at least take me out to dinner. Uh, but it's, it, be, be very careful in, in online relationships like that, because these, these scams are all over the place. And there are many large, organized, basically terrorist groups that this is, this is their sole purpose, and they use that to fund all kinds of illicit activity, but... Can the victims get into legal trouble? So victims, a lot of times, uh, victims, we, we, there, there's two types of victims in these. There's, there's straight victims, which would be a victim that just gives away their own money. But a lot of times, once those victims, once they run dry of their own money, the scammer will make that person what we would call a money mule. And so that they'll, they'll deplete it. And then as a money mule, they're going to have you run other victims' money through your accounts to further disguise it, to make it harder to track down. Uh, and stories, stories that I've heard in those situations are, uh, you know, if the person gets in a construction accident or they get in legal trouble, they like, take, for example, the, 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 there's a scammer that uses his fake boss. He's going to say, well, you know, I'm, I'm in this South African jail. The South African IRS threw me in jail because I couldn't get this money. But, but my boss that you've been talking to, he's got all these friends across the United States. They're going to send you money. And since you've been sending me payments through crypto, you have all these accounts set up. You know how it works. I'm going to have those friends send the money to you because you know how to get it to me. So then what you don't realize is you, you are you're helping launder all of that money. And they're... Those are federal. Those are federal laws. It's uh, Title 18, United States Code 1956, and 1957 are two money laundering statutes, and they carry severe prison sentences. But if you know, if, if victims are victims, we don't prosecute people for being victims. But it is a violation of federal law, and if you were notified <laughs> that you were doing this, of course you need to stop or you can be prosecuted, but all of this is is a violation of federal law, and people don't people don't realize how serious that is. And like I said, it's it's funding terrorist groups and sometimes uh, drug organizations, and, and it's a major problem. And it's just it's it's very easy for these people because people when they put themselves out on dating websites, you put all all the, your information out there, and you're going there completely open, looking for something, and you're. You know, giving up your time, your your information, yourself to be part of this relationship, and people are victimized all the time. Like I said, it's it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. People, 
because they believe you know somebody they love is in major trouble and you, you want that person to come back and and be with you so you may give away everything you have like i said i had a, a victim refinanced her house three times and you know gave up her, her 401k and it's people half a million dollars you know whatever the people have they will try to take but so uh, you know yeah. something to keep in mind if, you, if you're dating somebody online basically <laughs> the easiest way to not be victimized is don't send them money and try your best to to vet people meet people and you know receiving pictures that's not proof somebody's real even facetiming or video chatting with somebody that's not proof that somebody's real people can take you know if ek was a scammer he could take my face and put it in a video and it, it may not look like really good quality but it may look like i'm talking to you when really it's him so that's, you know, it, it's, it's hard to believe any of this stuff. Like I said, phone numbers can be spoofed, faces can be spoofed, pictures can really easily be stolen from other places, the internet to portray people. But it's really a, a major problem we're seeing across all federal law enforcement at local levels and just uh, certainly something to be aware of. Yeah, so I appreciate it. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so, you know, the whole thing he just described to you guys uh, is who who have heard this recently? You know, like love will make you do crazy things, <laughs> you know. But he and I will sit here, you know, like after hours, you know, nighttime, wherever, reading text messages that we've obtained from uh, victims, emails, and sometimes. It gets emotional because we see how these people are talking to people, how they're manipulating people. And then sometimes you feel like, man, this is messed up. This, this could be, you know, my mom. Somebody's just playing with her heart like this. And it's very, it's very hard. And it, it all has a sequence. You know, it starts, starts out very good, you know, nice to meet you and all this sweet talk and you know, uh, and essentially trying to find out how much money you're worth. You know, they, they, they are trained. We have templates of people like, he's my boss. He can have like 20 people like me, or like I can have people under me, and then I'm directing them, say, hey, this is what you say first. This is what you say tomorrow. Yeah, this is how love you letter this emails, level. and yeah. I, I've seen them, a letter. lot of them will say, insert name here, and they'll mm -hmm. come from one, you know, one scammer to, to another co-conspirator. Yeah. And, and like I said before, these people will say, well, you know, I get all these, I get 10 emails a day of these you know, really lovely, well-written love letters. Well, those are templates that they just fill a name into, and they can send 20 of them off at a time. It's not, yeah. you know, it's... You get a flower. You, know, you get good, nice bouquet. From a that local they sent you, and you 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 think it's it's real? No, they, they just sent you a bouquet that they bought online with somebody's stolen debit card that they had just stolen somewhere, and they sent it to you. So it's basically to again convince you and deceive you. You know, so th that's the main word: deceive you. And they started out by trying to be nice to you, by building, you know, like the nice relationship and all that stuff. It goes well. You start enjoying it. You start feeling it and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden, boom, something happens. He's in the military. He got arrested for being AWOL, or, you know, or whatever. Uh, uh, you know, his passport got lost. Well, that's not my business. If your passport got lost, you should Figure it out. Find a way to combat. You know, those, the, those, something happens. And then because you so care for them now, you have to be able to help them to get out of that. And then they test the water first. Hey, you know, I need 50 grand. You send 50 grand. Then they started cooking it a little bit more. They find out you, 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 you might have a house somewhere that nobody's living in or your investment property. Hey, they're going to work that angle at the angle, sorry, to see if you can sell that house with intent of you selling it and sending it to them. And then it keeps going. It keeps going. We've seen people where they run out completely where, you know, DSS will have to get involved to even pay their bills. Sell cars, sell, you know, everything. So, you know, bottom line is it's, it's, this is a, 
it's, it's, it's a process, and it's, it's, we've heard the same story. We've talked to dozens of victims, and it's the same story, same sequence all the time. Uh, you know, it's the, the, the thing that's not the same about it is the story that the victims tell us, what they believe. If you send the money mm -hmm. and y'all, and they get with the cops or whatever, the sheriff's department or whatever, and figure out that it's been a scam, what's the percentage to get the money back? Oh, boy. Like the, it, it depends. It depends where the money goes. If the money goes into crypto, especially if it goes right into like a Bitcoin ATM, you have pretty much no chance of getting that back. If the money comes from from an official check or a cashier's check from a bank, if that then goes to another financial institution, sometimes financial institutions do a really good job of recognizing this activity and and you know, potential money laundering. Maybe not knowing it's from a romance scam, but criminal activity, and will sometimes put holds on those accounts. If that money is held up somewhere in the legitimate banking system and you report fraud, you go to the police, uh, sometimes you know, some of that money can be returned. But it's, it's not common. A lot of times, you know, if you voluntarily give away your money, yes, you were, you were scammed, but you're still going and doing those transactions yourselves. A lot of times it is really hard to get, get back. We will certainly try, and I do with, with pretty much every victim that, that I've had in these scams. I, I will try, and I've, I've gone to banks in person with the victims to talk to their bank for them to try to help with that. And you know, sometimes we do, but the, the percentage, if I had to give it a, a number, even if you did get some money back, the amount of money you're going to get back, it's so most likely when, when money goes to one of these accounts, they're, they're mule accounts, like I had explained. So a lot of victims' money is going there. So even if there's 100,000 there and you sent 80,000, all of it, you know, you're not going to get 80 of that 100,000, even if all of it is seized by the government. You probably just get a small percentage because maybe 20 other victims sent money to that account. So it's, it's slim, the chances of getting any money back. And if you do get money back, the percentage of your actual loss is probably low. They're very good at moving in a lot of places and withdrawing it quickly to where it can't be traced. But and you all remember, there's no, there's no insurance. You know, like y'all hear the $250,000 insurance coverage, all that stuff with financial institutions. That's, uh, that's, does not apply to this. I mean, if you're willingly sending this money out, once it's gone, I mean, it's, it's gone. There's no insurance that's going to back that up. So the only chance of getting it back is if law enforcement's able to get a hold of those, those funds, freeze them, and send it back to you, which could be a lengthy process. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we will trace the, the money to the ends of the earth if we can. And we, we put in many hours tracing through many people. I, I've had webs of like 100 to 200 people involved in, in these scams. We'll trace the money everywhere we can. But like I said, it is, it is hard to get it back. And it's the most important thing, like EK had said before, is to not be embarrassed if you think you are in a scam like this. I, I mean, it, it's really hard to be a victim because not only have you lost a lot of money, but a lot of times you feel like you've lost a relationship because you believed for, for months, sometimes years. I've talked to victims who have been involved in this for two, three years. They've been you know, strung along that, that long. And not being embarrassed allows you to go to the authorities and get help. And it also allows you to talk to some people to process the emotional toll that comes on that. I've had many victims say, you know, we've said, do you have somebody to talk to about this, to process all this? And they say, oh, no, I'm too embarrassed. I'm not going to tell my family. I won't tell my friends, my coworkers. So not being embarrassed is some of the best advice I can give, I can give on any kind of scam is before you get in deeper and, and try to get help. Yeah, there's a lot of times I'll tell y'all with the, uh, you know, just from the credit union standpoint, along those lines of being embarrassed and everything, we see these romance scams all the time. I mean, it's like, it's becoming like almost like on a weekly basis. And so we, you know, we try to get them and sit down and talk to us about it. And a lot of times they're just super embarrassed. They don't want their family to know about it because no one knows that they're in this love relationship <laughs> and uh, um, you know but once we're able to you know we'll keep things confident and confidential um, it doesn't have to go out to their family and everything um, but it, it does take a lot I mean I've been in the office for hours trying to convince people that this is a scam they're just so in love with this person that they just have a hard time believing it and the way I kind of compare it um, I'm sure a lot of y'all have uh, siblings, parents, children, and imagine the love that you have for them, they might have that same type of love for
for this scammer. And so imagine me telling you that your child is a scam. You know, it's kind of, it's a hard thing to wrap around your mind. And that's how they feel. Um, you have, and the best thing you can do if you have a friend or family that is in a scam um, is not to attack them. We see that a lot where uh, the children or the friends or whoever is yelling at them. I've had where one of the children is yelling at their parent, like, yeah, I can't believe you fell for this. This is stupid. You know, you're, you're an idiot for doing this. Like, don't treat them like that because they are. They're victims. I mean, they were swindled into believing these scams. And, uh, um, and so the best thing you do is just give as much support as you can and help keep them from continuing to do this. All right, that was a good, uh, good discussion. That's that's something we've we've been seeing quite often now. Uh, so just just be on the lookout for that. Again, call us at any time. We will mind. That's what we get paid to do, and we will we will try. We'll do our best to see if we can get you know the the, the guy or the girl, whoever's doing it, um, for you. Uh, this is another big one. Uh, I, I will let my friend talk about it, but he 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 will come back to talk yeah, about you want that. To skip that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's in my. Yeah, he he will come back and talk to you guys about imposters. But one thing I will say about that though, is that not only it's not just you know federal agents. The people can call you, say, hey, I'm from the Clayton Police Department. If you don't send me this money, I will come and arrest you. <laughs> they will. And, you know, first thing I would do is call the police department and say, hey, you have this officer? They might even, we, we have our names on our police <laughs> website, right? They can find my name. Hey, I'm Officer Martinez. They'll call and say, I'm Officer Mart Martinez, whatever. But you can certainly call the Clayton Police Department and say, and we'll tell you flat out, no, this is a scam. So, you know, be on the lookout for those too. And, and these are the met methods that they actually sent them the money through. Bank wire transfer, iTunes card, you know, Google Pay, Western Union, MoneyGram, and all, all this stuff. You, you think about how people are asking you to pay them or, or send them the money. Think about that. You know, I, I like, I like the, the, you know, to feel my money, <laughs> you know. So I, I'd rather give it to you cash or I will send it to you through credit union so I know that at least I have a second eye looking at it. You know, I have a witness. Or, or you know, at least it be traced. You know, but any of this stuff is very hard. You know, think about it. Th this should be a red flag. If somebody says, send me iTunes card. <laughs> I've, I've never purchased an iTunes card. I've, I've never sent to it. I, I wouldn't, you know. I'll get into this too, but the IRS does not accept iTunes gift cards for people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But just be on the lookout for this. Think about the way they're asking you to pay. You know, that should be a red flag too. And uh, now, what you what do you do about scam? You know, think about that acronym right there in the red. Talk. Talk about it. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be scared. Uh, you know, you, you can call us. I'll sit down and talk to you about it all day. And that's what I, I get paid to do. That's what I do every day. Well, you, you've seen, we, we're just talking about it. You know, we've seen it all. So, but talk about it. Feel comfortable. Start conversation with people. You know, it's okay to talk about it. Because, you know, that's how you share experiences. And not only for you, it's saving the, the, the headache for somebody else. You know, talk about it. Listen to people. Trust the bank people. When you go in there, they say, this isn't looking good. Let's talk about it a little bit more. Maybe two, minute, two more minutes talking about it, who will click it, right? You know, talk about it. Keep talking about it. You know, we'll figure it out together, you know. But me being in my corner, just myself, you know, doing it, you know, it'll get too far before somebody will actually know about it. But by talking about it, Granted, losing any money is not fun, but losing a thousand is better than losing a hundred thousand, right? So keep talking about it. I know it. a lot of y'all are members. I recognize a lot of y'all, but the uh, um, 
come into the credit union. I, I tell people that all the time. You see anything that's, you want a second opinion, no matter what it is, you just come on into the credit union and let us look at it. Um, even if you're not a member, come on in and, and see us. Yes, ma'am. Um, cash App. Yes. What do they do about, you know, when people send a cash app and the other person don't receive it? I mean, are you really responsible? I mean, are you just losing out? Cause if what, the other person doesn't actually receive it? Right, because a friend of mine, someone sent her money, but she, well, was sending her money and she didn't receive it. So it was a phone number and she had me to call the number and I called the number and I got, you know, some foreign guy and he was like, well, what you're gonna have to do is go to Walmart and get a Google Pay card and do this and do that. And then we was like, well, sir, we're stuck on the side of the road. We're trying to get home. Why do we need a Google Pay card? And besides, the Walmart is like five miles from where we are. He says, oh, I'll just stay on the phone with y'all till you walk there. That's 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 uh, that's the way it goes. Yeah. No, he's yeah. he, he's on the clock. He's working. That's common with the gift card scams is that they will stay on the phone with you. Sometimes they'll stay on the phone with you to go into to the bank to to make sure you do whatever transactions. But those those gift cards is uh, you know of course they're a good method of fraud because they're hard to hard to trace. You can trace when they're bought. But and you can get data from, from the institutions that accept the gift cards and stuff like that. So they're, they're not completely untraceable. But most likely, sending a transaction like that, uh, the Cash App thing, most likely something is spoofed somewhere to look like it's going to a person, but it's really redirected. And that happens in, that happens in all cases. That happens to the federal government with, uh, with loans, uh, like the uh, Paycheck uh, Protection Program loans during COVID and all that, where funds will get redirected. They look like they're going somewhere, but somebody else has taken control of that account and spoofed a name, spoofed an account number, things like that. And you, you think, because that money, if that money is sent, it is going somewhere. It doesn't just get lost and, you know, it, it's going to some address or wallet. Um, yeah. So it most likely something was spoofed somewhere. And, and you, can, you can report fraud to, to those institutions themselves, but you're better off reporting it to the local police. In, in those situations. And then if it becomes bigger, like I said, it, it may go on to other law enforcement, but the local police are, are your friends when it comes to any kind of, uh, any kind of theft, fraud like that. And I can tell you, Cash App is not very friendly with law enforcement. They so know they're I don't a portal use it. for fraud. Yeah. I, I don't use it. Uh, and, and if I'm the one investigating it, I'm telling you I don't use it. <laughs> That's what we call in law enforcement a clue. Uh, but I just, <laughs> You know, the fact that you, you said that they said they didn't receive the money. Yeah. When I heard that, I'm like, yeah. I, I kind of imagined the, the next question that's coming down, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, you know, send it to this and send it to the guy. And, and we've seen these cases all the time where, you know, oh, I didn't receive the money. But they actually got it. They just wanted more. So. Right. Yeah. 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 So that was a good question. So, uh, you know, avoid scams. We've, we've, we've talked about this stuff. Avoiding sharing personal information with people, social security number, you know, all that stuff. Don't, don't share any of that stuff with anybody, you know. you know. Do research before you send any money to anybody. Research it, you know. Call the number back. See if it's, actual, uh, you know, it's an actual number. Call it back. If, if you hear, you know, the noise like it's a fax machine, or, you know, you know, whatever, call it back. Avoid paying up front. You know, like rental scam. You know, I want to pay up front. No, 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 no. So I get served first and then I pay. You know, uh, think about the method, how they're asking you to pay. They get iTunes card, you know, Cash App, all these places. You know, the reason why they're using those avenues is because they figure that it's going to be hard for law enforcement to work it. That's the only reason why they use it. they're using it. They're not going to go to the bank. They're not, no. They want to use the hardest one for us to work on or for you to even track it. So think about how they want you to pay for it. You know, talk to people you trust, family members, bank employees. Avoid depositing checks that people sent to you. you know, just look out for those things. And <clears throat> constantly check your credit uh, reports. 
if, if your information has been compromised, Experian, uh, Equifax, TransUnion, I believe they have those in your folder in front of you. Uh, and certainly call us. Call us. We're here 24-7. We'll come down, talk to you. We'll do the best we can. Um, another w thing we, we've been seeing recently uh, at a local level in Clayton is that people come down from you know, Florida, all this, you know, alongside 95, they come down here and they do, uh, they steal credit cards. That's the job. They steal credit cards every day. And how, they, how do they do that? They specifically target uh, women who go to parks to walk in the morning, daycare centers, you know, churches. Places that you go to, you, you go with your purse and you live in the car. And so what they do is they go there, they see a purse in the car, they smash the door open, they smash your, per, uh, your, your purse, and they're gone. They go to Walmart, all these places, they buy iTunes card, gift card, and all that stuff, and they have ways to withdraw the money. And that's what we see all the time. So you see this person? So they go to the bank, they go to the far, far, far land, they write fake checks in your name, assuming they go steal Miss Sandra's, I'm sorry for using you. <laughs> they steal her, her purse, and it has her uh, checkbook in it, and her ID. What they do is, after they try to use her debit card, whether it, work, it worked or not, they will write a check in her name, because they have her ID now. They write a check with her checkbook, and they write it for, you know, 5,000, whatever, and they'll put wig on. Let's say I'm a man, black male, whatever. I put makeup on, put wig, trying to look like her. And then they go through the far, 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 far land at the bank because the bank is kind of fuzzy, maybe. They can't see it or they're in a hurry, whatever, whatever. They're just trying their chances. And they've gotten some money, and that's what they do. So what I would advise is when you go out to those places, you know, hide your purse, don't take it with you, leave it at home, you know, or, or don't leave your ID. I just take my ID with me, uh, not, certainly not the checkbook, you know, and, and because th those people, you, you really can't avoid them. They are there, that's all they do. We've seen that uh, it's happening very, very, very quickly right now, and they, you, then you have to live with fixing your, your car window and all that stuff, too. So uh, these are some resources for you that you can, uh, you can use, you know, call, call us, uh, call the Department of Agriculture, call to you, uh, NC, North Carolina Attorney G General's Office, you know, banks, commissioners for banks, insurance, state, utilities, those are numbers for you. Uh, you know, if you need any of those, you can call anytime, and, and we'll, we'll be able to help you out. Yeah, I was going to say with that felony land gang, the, uh, um, we see that so much at the credit union, uh, those attempts. Um, we stop a lot of them, but there's some that are hard to stop. So, I mean, you think about it, they've stolen the ID and checks from maybe you, you know, and your account's in great standing, and this check for $1,000 presented, and we look at the account and go, it's good stand, you know, great member. I mean, there's no reason why we should not take this check, and we – take the check and don't realize that it's someone in a wig and it's uh, they're really good at disguising themselves they're not always good we catch a lot of them um, but just remember you know like EK was saying um, you know don't leave stuff in your car don't allow someone to steal anything but at the same time if that ever does happen contact the police contact your financial institution and report all that there's because this is such a growing crime there's a lot of things that, like with the credit union, that we, a lot of precautions that we're now taking that's hoping to stop that. But it helps when we know that your ID was stolen. Yeah. Yeah, so there are uh, some more resources for you. The IC3, uh, that's the uh, FBI uh, website. In case, you know, it gets to the point where you don't want to call us, you don't want to talk to the bank or whatever. Of course, I don't encourage that. You can go online, file a complaint there. You know, somebody will probably call you or come down and talk to you. 
Uh, there are some more websites there for uh, international schemes. But, uh, so I know I've already been, been talking to you, but uh, I, my name's James Daly. Uh, on the PowerPoint in front of me that I have here, my name is on there. It says a presenter name title. So my presenter name, James Daly, and I am a special agent with Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigation. Uh, I'm out of the Raleigh office, and uh, I do live locally here. All right, so as I said there, my name's supposed to be on there. We'll ignore that, move on. Uh, objectives, I'm not gonna spend any time on that. That's some of the stuff I'm gonna talk about, but we'll talk about it when we talk about it. No sense reading through those. Uh, the, the mission statement, so that there is criminal investigation. That's our mission statement. So as a, a special agent with criminal investigation of the IRS, I am a federal agent, just like, like FBI agents, DEA agents, all that. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to take a minute here to try to dispel some of the, the myths that you've all probably heard about, about IRS agents. Uh, there's been a lot of incorrect news, malicious news, things that are dangerous for us. Uh, first off, you know, the IRS has hired is going to hire over the next 10 years, I believe, a lot of new employees. But the statement of the, the 87,000 armed agents is completely incorrect. The IRS does have plans to hire 87,000 employees over the next 10 years, but those employees are people to answer phone calls, auditors, all, all across the board. There are actually only 2,077 special agents like me. We are the only armed members of the IRS, uh, and like I said, we are members of federal law enforcement. We're not, we're not auditors, we don't do tax collection, we don't come to people's doors and forcefully collect tax. People that do collection are not, they're not armed, they're not law enforcement. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion sometimes between titles, uh, revenue agents of the IRS and revenue officers are their auditors and collectors even though they have the title agents and officers, they're not law enforcement like special agents are. It's just, I guess, a, an unfortunate naming <laughs> mix up. But yeah, so that, that's, yeah, like I said, there's only 2,077 of us and we, we are primarily financial investigators. We investigate all kinds of financial crimes. Uh, we are the only ones in federal law enforcement that have Title 26 investigative authority. Title 26 is the tax code, but that is only a part of what we do. So our, our main areas of focus there is the traditional core mission tax fraud. So that is the, that is the, the Title 26 stuff. Uh, but we also do other financial crimes, including uh, money laundering, like I spoke about with the, the romance scam stuff there. Uh, we investigate terrorist financing and and, and terrorism and things related to that. We do a lot of cybercrime, which comes into the, the cryptocurrency and other types of, of uh, virtual currency. And we do uh, narcotics-related investigations as well. We have agents that are members of the OCDEF task force, which is uh, Organized Crime and Drug Enforcement Task Force. And we work with all the other federal agencies. So basically, if there's money involved in a federal crime, we, as IRS CI special agents, can be involved in that. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some scam topics that are specifically IRS. Some of it may be a little bit more boring than uh, EKs, but it is. Uh, we're coming up soon on on tax season. You know, once, once we get into the spring, and so some of these things I want to talk about are specific scams related to IRS and, and having your taxes done and things like that that I think you all should be aware of. So first, we'll talk about return preparers themselves. So. When you go to somebody to have, have tax returns done, these are good qualities you should look for in, in a tax preparer. The next slide is gonna talk about things that you should look to avoid, but when you have your taxes done, and I'm sure, I'm guessing a lot of you probably have your taxes prepared by somebody else. The, the tax, doing taxes yourself, even a lot of IRS employees and agents don't do their own taxes. Uh, so. It's, it is complicated, but uh, when, when you go to a return preparer, you, you want to have somebody who is going to sign your return in their own name as the preparer. You know, not if, if Bob does it, he shouldn't sign it, Sally. 
it, it should, you know, all that should match and enters their own, their PTIN, which is their, just like we have social security numbers, a preparer when they're registered with the IRS has a PTIN, which is a preparer tax identification number. That should all be legitimate. They should give you a copy of the tax return when you leave if they refuse to give you a copy. The reason is probably because they put a bunch of stuff on there that you don't know about and they don't want you to see it. Uh, they should charge a set fee for their service. So you should know going in that it's going to be something like, you know, $150 to have your tax return prepared. That amount shouldn't change as your refund goes up. If it does, that could be a sign of, again, them putting in false items to inflate that refund so they can charge you more money. Uh, yeah, they should ask you questions and answer your questions, and they should allow you to review the return with them and ask those questions before you sign it. And again, you, you should see it. Uh, so next slide here, talking about what you should avoid. Uh, Signing a blank, a blank tax form, if, if, uh, if your preparer asks you to sign it before they've put anything on it, that's, that's not good. They're probably going to take that blank one and put a bunch of crazy stuff on it later, and your signature's on it. Uh, like I said, they're charging a fee based on higher refund amounts. Any, any places that have a, a sign in the window that say, you know, you get the highest refund in town here, it's not because they're really good and they know some secret that everybody else doesn't know. The tax code is complicated, but it's not that complicated that there's these special things people could do. Most likely, they're going to do something illegal. Uh, oh, and the, the fly-by-night or temporary office location, you know, if somebody, this is a little goofy, but if somebody sets out, up a, a tent out there in that parking lot and says they're going to prepare your tax returns, it wouldn't be a good place to go. You, you, know, you want to go somewhere that you can ask questions or in the event that there's any issues, that you can go back to that person and they're reputable. Uh, some more boring tax stuff here. So some common practices for fraudulent tax returns is uh, they will attach fraudulent schedules such as Schedule A, which is itemized deductions, or Schedule C, which is fake businesses. We see a lot of, of fake businesses where you, know, you may never have had a business, but your return preparer will create a Schedule C and put you as having a, a sole proprietorship, you know, a, a single business. And most of the times, they're not going to put that your business earned any money. They're just going to put that it had expenses, which it's an easy red flag when uh, auditors on the civil side of the IRS see that this business you know, has had $10,000 of expenses but made no money. Uh, and that, that goes along there with the, uh, the inflating the personal business expenses. Claiming false dependence. If, uh, if anyone ever asks you if you would like to... Uh, <laughs> To buy a dependent and put somebody else's kid on your tax return, that is not legal. And just because somebody else isn't using that dependent doesn't mean that, that you can. It's uh, just, you know, just like you can't buy a, a child, <laughs> a physical child, you, you can't buy one to put on your tax return either. Uh, and then fraudulent tax credits, the earned income tax credit, child's tax credit, there's a lot of abuse with that. And I won't get into the details of that. but. Uh, do ask questions, know what's going into your, your tax return, and you know, if you don't understand why you got a credit, ask, and they should have good explanations for it. Uh, and you know, your return preparer should ask you about all sources of income you have, and they should ask you, you know, if you have any additional ones that, that you didn't bring in W-2s, you know, interest income, they should ask you about all those things. If, if they don't, that's a, a red flag. Uh, speaking of of fake tax credits, uh, one, one of our investigations recently, the return preparer used a whole lot of the, uh, the fuel tax credit. Uh, I'm going to guess that a lot of you in here probably haven't, haven't ever heard of the fuel tax credit. We hadn't heard of the fuel tax credit <laughs> before they started using it. So, uh, you know, crazy things like that do happen. But if it's something that goes on your return and you don't know what it is, ask questions. Okay. All right. So now we're going to get into some IRS phone and email scams that target taxpayers. So this this is a common thing. The uh, going back to I had mentioned a while ago the VOIP number thing, where people can spoof numbers to look like they're from somewhere else. Uh, I grew up in in Pennsylvania, and one time I had got a call, and it said Schuylkill Haven Police Department, and I knew that that my dad, who I don't talk to very often, but I knew my dad lived in that town. And uh, I thought something bad had potentially happened to, to my father. 
And I called that the Schoolhaven Police Department, the number that I Googled, and they said, oh, there's no record anybody ever called you. And it went all the way to the chief. And he said, yeah, nobody ever called you. So it's a perfect example that even, even the police, government entities, all of those numbers can be spoofed. So a number may look like it's coming from the IRS or the U.S. government. Just because it says that, it's, it's really easy to spoof those caller IDs. So don't, don't trust that. Uh, let me see. And <laughs> again, uh, we'll get into this a little bit, but anytime you receive a call, uh, here's, here's a good one, and I've, I've gotten this one on my government phone. Like EK had said, we, we get these all the time. And that's one of my favorite things is when I get a scam call and I let them go on a little bit and I say, you know you're calling a government phone, and then and click, that's the end of the call. <laughs> I've also got calls that say, press one to talk to a federal agent. So I'm, great, I'd, I'd love to talk to a federal agent. Uh, you don't know that they, you're currently talking to one, but uh, yeah, that, those are always good ones. But the, the most common IRS one that had went around for a long time was the one where it's, it's a really bad sounding robocall and it says something like, you know, if you owe money to the IRS, if you don't pay, the local cops will come arrest you. It says cops, doesn't say police, you know, it's very informal. And you can ask EK, as I said before, we are the only law enforcement branch in the country that can make any kind of arrests or investigations on tax-related crimes. So when they call me and tell me that the local cops are going to come arrest me for unpaid taxes, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But know that. I'm sure all of you have heard about those, those calls. Pretty much all of you have probably received them. I've probably received hundreds of those over the years. I think they're starting to die off a little bit now. But... Uh, the IRS doesn't solicit, they don't make calls for collections like that. The IRS will send certified mail or at least mail regarding payments, and then they will, they will ask you to reach out. You won't receive unsolicited emails unless you're in contact with the IRS for something. You won't receive text messages. You won't really receive phone calls. And you certainly won't receive phone calls asking you to pay in iTunes gift cards or Google Pay gift cards, or anything like that. The, the IRS certainly doesn't want your gift cards. But these, the, the phone call scams, th those are some of the biggest things going on right now, and they're, they're nationwide. And like I said, they have been going on for, for years. Uh, it's another part where I messed up on the PowerPoint. It says, insert state statistics right there. <laughs> I didn't insert the state statistics, but what I can tell you here is this is specifically talking about uh, the phone scams that, a little bit of an old uh, uh, statistic there, but between 2013 and 2018, the $71 million was stolen from innocent victims, and that's related to the phone scams. Uh, top five, you know, California, where there always seems to be lots of crime. It was 14.4 million, New York 7.5 million. I'm sure North Carolina being a larger state is probably in the, the low single digit millions as well for these scams because people do, people do go and buy the gift cards and send them off and things like that because you know, the IRS can be scary. If the IRS tells you you owe money or the, the fake IRS, a lot of people would want to settle that. And scammers know that and they take advantage of that. So some of what I already said here, yeah, the IRS will not call to demand immediate payment. It doesn't work like that. Payment processes are much more complicated than, than just calling and saying, give me your credit card number or go buy some iTunes gift cards. Uh, <clears throat> the IRS won't call you first before you've received the bill. Like I said, you receive something certified mail first, and most of the time you, you would probably know if you owed something anyway. But... Uh, and the, the IRS would also would not demand that you pay the taxes without giving you the opportunity to, to question why you owe money or explain to you specifically how, how and why you own that, that money. Okay, yeah, prepaid debit cards, gift cards, asking for credit cards uh, over the phone, <laughs> threatening to bring local law enforcement over there. Like I said, we, we do that stuff ourselves. We don't uh, need the locals. And like I said before, we don't. If you owe just a little bit of tax money, special agents with guns don't show up at your door. That's, that's all, that's a myth. It's, you know, most collection is handled on the civil side of the IRS, which has no, no force. It's all paperwork and, you know, and, and, and those sorts of things. OK, 
Okay, talking about phone scam calls. So if you do receive any of those phone calls, uh, there is actually another law enforcement branch of the United States Treasury, which is uh, TIGDA. It's the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. They're a much smaller group. They're different from uh, the CI special agents, but they actually handle investigating crimes against the IRS. We don't. So they take all of that, that information there, which is, uh, that's probably not in, in your packets, I would guess, but it is available. It's really easy to access on uh, the IRS.gov website you know, if reporting any, any actual frauds. If it's the robocall about the local police coming to investigate you, I assure you people will already know about that. But uh, anything more you know, sophisticated, anything you want to report. Uh, and also the, uh, the Federal Trade Commission complaint assistant.gov, FTC, that's, that's a good place to report uh, any of that stuff. Uh, so phishing attempts. We talked before about uh, phishing is when somebody reaches out and they try to solicit personal information from you. The IRS has seen uh, a large growth in, in these phishing attempts and you know, IRS or, uh, taxpayers being directed to, to uh, IRS looking websites that are you know, spoofed websites to enter personal information, just you know, a way to, uh, to steal identity. Uh, the bottom one there, emails to tax professionals with a link to update their software. That's really malware. You click that link, and like we had mentioned before, you just, just like, a, like a vampire that you supposedly have to invite them into your house. They can't get in if you don't invite them. Malware is like that, too. If you don't click the link, they can't install the malware. But once you do, you're inviting that malware in. Uh, here's an example of an email like this. The IRS doesn't really send emails like this, so if you receive one, it's a scam, but looks like looking up there, it says it's from irs.gov. Uh, that that box after that is showing pretty much that the the address is modified, but you may not see that. A lot of times, if you hover over those links, though, you will see that it doesn't actually it doesn't say irs.gov or anything government related when you actually hover over that link. But looks like it's coming from the IRS, and uh, you know, it looks like they're saying. They need to verify your personal information. So you know, you're know you going to click click that link, and it's going to give you somewhere to, uh, to input that information. And I can tell you, if, if you do owe money to the IRS or the IRS needs to contact you in any way, we have all of that information. We have, you know, just like any law enforcement can find information, if somebody comes out to you to, you know, to, to question you about anything criminal related or anything, they're not going to ask you for your social security number. We're going to have that information. We as, as, as law enforcement, not even just specifically the IRS. Uh, so and the IRS doesn't need to reach out regularly to verify information. It doesn't work like that. So those, those are a scam. They're very common. Uh, I believe I've received some of those as well. And like I said there, when, uh, when, when you click on that link, it may take you to a page like this. And this, this is a real page. It, like, uh, this is a real scam page. It says irs.gov. It has the logo up there. Even down here, it has a link to the IRS privacy policy, which probably really takes you to the IRS privacy policy. So it looks really good, but they're, they're asking you for a whole lot of information on there. Uh, and, you know, yeah, they look, they look very official. These, these people are very good at that because they fine-tune them over time to, to see what works. And... Uh, but again, the IRS does not solicit information like that. <clears throat> it's not working. Oh. Help if I push the right button. Okay, I'll skip that. Okay, so here, this is another. This is another email here. And just like when we talked about the romance scams, this is a template. Insert taxpayer email address, but. They'll use this to send out maybe you know tens of thousands of them at a time. It's just like uh, you know phishing here that we refer to with a ph. It's just like phishing with an f. A lot of times you uh, you throw out many casts and you you, know, you don't catch a fish every time you cast. These people send out thousands of these these phishing attempts, and if they get just a few hits and they get a few social security numbers and all that, that's worth it to them. And having these templates makes it really efficient to be able to do that. So if they send out 10,000, maybe they get 10 back. That's a success, and it's it's really easy with with these templates. But 
Here's another example. The link up there, this is an example of one of those that may take you to uh, what looks like a tax professional's website to solicit information. So instead of spoofing the IRS themselves, they may go a slightly easier route and try to look like uh, something like this that looks like a, uh, this, this one's completely made up to debit and credit consulting services. That's an accounting joke. But uh, all this on here, you know, looks like there's a, a real professional there, says she's, she's an, an appointed debt collector. I've never heard of one of those. And the IRS doesn't have debt collectors. The IRS doesn't use third parties uh, to collect debt. So of course, that is all a scam. But again, it looks, it looks like a professional website. And you get further in that, you know, it's got all this information to try to you know, help you understand what's going on. But eventually, it's going to ask you to uh, provide some, uh, some of your personally identifiable, identifiable information, such as your social security number, account numbers, things like that. Uh, so we had already talked about this. You know, if you do receive phishing emails, the best thing to do is uh, delete them. Don't ever give out information in them. Uh, certainly don't open any attachments, because a lot of times those attachments are straight malware or some other kind of virus. And by clicking it and opening it, you are starting the, the installation process. And that's what it's talking about there. The malicious code could be key loggers, which is software that, that logs your keystrokes. So when you go to your bank and you type in your, your password, it logs it and it sends it back to whoever had installed that so they can obtain your passwords that way. So the only time, like I said before, the only time you should receive any kind of email from the IRS is if you've been in contact with the IRS and basically you've accepted to receive communication in that form. You won't ever receive any unsolicited ones. There is, if you receive any emails, you can send them to phishing at irs.gov. I do that all the time when I receive emails. I receive fake emails to, to my government email uh, all the time, which it's, don't know why people think a, an email that ends in .gov would be a good place to scam, but but they do. Okay, some general online safety tips here. So these are these are, are good. They go for anything. You know, if, if you're accessing bank information, if you're out and you're in a Starbucks or something like that, and you're connected to their free Wi-Fi, you shouldn't ever access any kind of you know, confidential type information. No banking information, nothing like that. No entering passwords. Uh, there are really easy ways. You can buy these tools really cheap on Amazon to, it's just basically a black box and I could take it out and I can go sit in Starbucks and I could set up a Wi-Fi network called Starbucks Wi-Fi. And I can sit there and I can, all of that unprotected Wi-Fi traffic of everybody on their phones without VPNs or any kind of protection, I can see all of that traffic. And it's, this happens a lot. It happens in airports uh, and going along with that too. Airports, uh, Plugging a phone in to charge, if you ever plug a phone in to charge out anywhere public, if there's those USB ports that are built into the wall somewhere, you shouldn't plug a USB cord in. You should always plug the actual plug into an outlet. That's inviting, again, malware and other malicious uh, viruses into phones by plugging into those USB ports. Uh, shop at familiar on online retailers. Uh, tip here is uh, when, when you look at the beginning of a web address, HTTPS, the S stands for secure. There are certain methods that websites have to, certain things they have to go through to be able to get that S to basically be certified as a secure website. That's what you should aim for shopping on, especially if you're going to input, if you're actually going to buy something and input credit card numbers. There's things like, you know, PayPal, if, if a website offers PayPal or third party payment system that you're familiar with where you have to log in to that account separately away from the website, those are more secure than giving your, your credit card directly to a website, especially if it's somewhere you don't know, or you haven't shopped before. Uh, learning to recognize and avoid phishing emails, we've talked a whole lot about that. Keeping a clean machine, so this talks about you know, avoiding malware and uh, uh, different kinds of virus software. You can get, like we talked about before, you can get software, uh, protective software, antivirus software for your cell phones as well. All the major companies, that make it for your computer, pretty much also make it for your cell phone now. I have, I have uh, 
malware protection, antivirus software on my cell phone. A lot of them also come with VPNs. So if you are on an unprotected network, you can use that VPN to offer you protection to be able to uh, access whatever websites you want without worrying about uh, having your traffic monitored. Using strong passwords that are long and unique, things like pass phrases where it's actually a sentence is better than you know, using something really common like a pet's name, password 1234, those kinds of things. Uh, the unique part in there, I recommend if you have multiple banks, things like that, using unique passwords for all of those in the event that somebody steals a password, it's not the same for all of your financial accounts. I like to use things like where I have a, a, a base password and then I use different endings, different special characters, uh, different numbers, things like that for different, different financial institutions and things like that. So like I said, if somebody gets my password to one, they don't have it to everything and they can't access everything I use online. Uh, Multi-factor authentication, that's the ones where you get like a, a text code when you log in, you put in your password and then you receive a text code and you have to enter that code. It gets uh, you know, sent to your phone or they may call your phone. Those are good just because in the event somebody steals your password, it's no good if they don't physically have your phone as well to verify through that multi-factor authentication method. Uh, encrypting and password protects sensitive data. If you are ever corresponding with a bank or something like that and you have to send account statements or any of your actual information, you should ask that institution if they have a secure portal to send it through. You shouldn't ever, through regular email, send your social security number or anything like that. It's unprotected across the internet. can be easily accessed by uh, criminals and scammers. Uh, the grandchild scam there, we had already touched on that, but uh, these are just some other scams, not specifically IRS related. The, imperson the impersonization of uh, charitable organizations, that is really common. There are, if, if a charity is legitimate, there are websites, and I don't know if I know any of them off the top of my head, but there are places you can go to, ver to verify charities are legitimate before making any payments to them. Uh, fraudsters posing as tad taxpayer advocacy panels. That's things like uh, seeing on, on, on TV and things where, you know, it's, uh, are you in trouble with the IRS or call this number? A lot of times they just kind of steal information and they don't actually help you with any, any legal trouble you may be in. Spoofing emails sent to HR or payroll employees. We see this a lot where if, if any of you work in an HR or payroll capacity, and I know banks receive these all the time where spoofed emails will reach out to the HR personnel and they will try to get social security numbers from the HR people because they know they have all that, that, uh, that information. They can access all that information from maybe the 50 or 100 employees that work for that company. And then a lot of times that gets used for uh, applying for, for fake benefits, loans, fake tax returns, all kinds of, all kinds of things. Uh, or maybe sold on the, the dark web for other things, and that, that's kind of the same thing there for the attacks on payroll companies. Uh, so to reduce, these are some things you can do to, to fight identity theft. Don't carry around your social security number. That includes not carrying your social security card. I see that really commonly, and my, my own wife who was, who was here a few minutes ago used to carry her social security card in her wallet. Somebody steals your wallet, you know, not only do they get your credit card and your driver's license, but if your social security card is in there with your social security number, that's a, that's a much bigger issue. So that's something that should be you know, locked in a safe with secure documents or something like that at home, or at least not carried on your person. Uh, I know a lot of y'all do that, because I get a lot of members when I say, oh ask yeah. for their social, they pull out their card, so. <laughs> yeah, just take that out of your wallet. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's very good advice. Um, <laughs> along that line, just because a, a business asks for your social security number doesn't mean you have to give it out. You should at least ask why they need your social security number. A lot of businesses now will put optional you know, on forms that you'll fill out, like uh, onboarding forms, if they don't actually need it. A lot of times they like it because it helps them identify, especially when it comes to insurance claims and things like that, it helps them uniquely identify you. But... The, the fewer places you give your social security number out to, the better. It's, it's less, you know, less opportunities for a breach. 
Uh, we already talked about protecting your information on, on, at your home and on your computer. You know, that involves locking up secure documents at home uh, on your computer. It's the, the antivirus software, VPNs, all those kinds of things, sending things securely, not accessing sensitive things on unprotected Wi-Fi. Uh, we already touched on checking your credit report annually. There's lots of free services out there to be able to do it, and I believe all of the big three credit bureaus offer one credit report for free a year. And it's really good. Your credit report is a great place to see if uh, any, any loans have been opened in your name without your knowledge. Also, a lot, of, a lot of banks and credit card companies offer alerts that you can sign up for when your, your, uh, your credit has been accessed. If somebody opens a loan in your name, uh, Discover It's one of them that I know that has a lot of alerts. If, if I sign up for another credit card somewhere, I'll get an alert through the Discover app saying my credit report has been accessed. And that's, you know, those are good. Anytime you get those, those free alerts through your financial institutions, those are good really good to, to sign up for, take advantage of those. Uh, checking with the Social Security Administration, earning statement annually, make sure somebody isn't receiving Social Security benefits in your name that you don't know about. And all those are things that the, the uh, Social Security Administration website, which I believe is just ssa.gov, has, has information on how to do that. Uh, we had talked about the fire, firewalls, anti-spam, virus, Updating security patches and changing passwords, all of that is really good advice. And uh, another one, too, is talking about going back to those like Microsoft scams where somebody can remote into your computer and they, they call and they're tech support. It's good advice to not save your passwords. You know, when you check that little remember me box or save password, or if you save them in your browser, if someone accesses your computer or you leave your computer somewhere, it gets stolen, somebody can get into your computer and all of your passwords are saved in your financial institutions and they could go into your internet history and see that you go to wellsfargo.com and then they go there and your password and username are saved in there, they just click log in, now they have access to all that. So saving, saving internet, internet passwords in the browser, anything like that, I don't think that's a good idea, ever, really. There are secure software programs you can use that save passwords for you. Uh, I don't really like those, but a lot of them are good. They're out there if you have a hard time remembering passwords. And since I'm telling you, you should have unique <coughs> passwords for everything. It could be a lot to remember. But you can save passwords sometimes like in an Excel spreadsheet or something like that and password protect it. At least that has some kind of security. Uh, we already talked about that. Checking your credit report often. That's good. And checking uh, credit card statements and things like that often. A lot of credit cards have, pretty much all of them, have, have apps where you can you know, at least every few days look and make sure you recognize all the transactions that are on there. There's so many credit card number breaches these days uh, from you know, all kinds of major vendors and a lot of times people will go and have a whole lot of fraudulent transactions and they may go a long time without recognizing them and then by at a certain point if it's gone too long it's harder to reimburse that person for those fraudulent charges. Uh, okay, we already talked about that, Social Security and unemployment benefits. That was a big problem during COVID was the unemployment benefits issues. Uh, you, know, you can check with those, those government agencies to make sure somebody else isn't receiving benefits in your name. Uh, and you know, your financial institutions, if you find out of any, any accounts that were open that you didn't know about, it's definitely a good idea to have them closed. And uh, the last bullet point there, using caution in disclosing PII, that's personal identifiable information. So that's social security number, driver's license number, anything that personally identifies you that's unique to you. Be very careful in giving that out. And that includes you know, asking why places need that information, uh, all of that, you know, in encrypting emails, secure emails, all that kind of stuff. Uh, contact information, I also didn't put that in there. So if anybody does want my contact information, I probably have about 50 business cards in my, in my bag. Uh, I can give those out. But, so now I guess, uh, Morgan, do you want to yeah, do I'll, some of I'll, uh, we are, get really tight on time? Yeah, something. we're pushing on time. So I'm just going to take about two seconds and summarize something, if you all are able to throw that. Um, 
And I'll tell you while they pull up this PowerPoint, um, I'm just going to kind of give basically just a summary of a lot of this stuff. And uh, we do, to let y'all know, we have uh, some Chick-fil-A back there for y'all. So help yourself. Grab that um, before you go. We have uh, someone else coming in and using this room at 12 o'clock, uh, about five minutes. So they might be nice and let us have a few more minutes afterwards. So, um, and I know y'all might have some more questions. I'd be happy to, even if we need to get out of this room, we can meet outside. It looks like a nice day out. Um, and I can roll to... So here's my presentation. Hope y'all enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, y'all getting all this? Okay. <laughs> so um, this part again. This is a lot of repeat, um, and I don't want to, uh, <laughs> you know, be redundant with everything. Um, but just going through these again, um, protecting yourself. Uh, if an offer sounds too good to be true, yeah, right. So I mean, remember that because sometimes. Uh, greed sets in a little bit and you, and you just need to uh, tell yourself, no, this is not true. Um, when it comes to uh, now or never opportunity, choose never. Um, and these are kind of the, uh, the, the rush ones. They're like, you got to do this now. You got to make this. And, you know, just, just take a step back and, uh, and give it a day. Um, don't give personal information to people who you don't know unless you initiate the contact. Uh, that is you know, real big. Anybody that's trying to, that contacts you, don't be afraid to hang up the phone like we talked about before, or uh, if they're even coming to your front door, tell them to leave and we'll contact your business later when I'm interested in it. Um, get estimate, estimates and ask for references on home repair offers and other services. How many of y'all get those folks that, that come to your door and uh, d uh, like a um, pest control company or solar power, you know, it's just be cautious on those. Uh, try not to even talk to them, but um, if they give you information, just say no. You know, not interested. If I am, I'll call you. If it kind of like, well, this is the only opportunity that you get to get this deal. It, well, it's that now or never thing. Just don't take it. Uh, it's, sh it's shrewd, not rude to hang up on a suspicious telemarker. Just hang up the call. Um, hang up on robocalls. Don't even answer them. Um, don't believe your caller ID like he stated before. I've had folks, my own contacts, call me and it wasn't really them before. Um, never wire, send iTunes, gift cards, all that that we talked about before. Just don't ever do that. Uh, don't deposit a check and wire money back. We talked about that a lot. Um, if, and I'll say one thing with checks, if you get any suspicious check, um, bring it on into the credit union. If you're not a member of the credit union, come on in. I mean, my name is Morgan. You more than welcome come on in. I'll take a look at it for you. Um, and uh, let's see here, be skeptical of online charitable solicitations. That's a lot of what we talked about too. Uh, just do your research when it comes to anything that pops up online. Um, and like uh, the EK was talking about before with his is uh, talk. Talk to people, ask questions. Uh, don't agree to pay for products or services in advance. I mean, that even comes to after hurricanes and I'm here to fix your roof, you know, try to get some quotes and uh, see if they can do the job first before you give any kind of payment. Um, if you suspect fraud, contact your local law enforcement agency immediately. Uh, shred bills. Buy a little shredder. They're so cheap on Amazon nowadays. Just get one. We, we have one in our kitchen. It looks like an appliance right next to the toaster. And you just shred it anytime <laughs> we sit some. Um, if you feel uncomfortable, tell someone about, um, that, uh, about that actual or attempted fraud. Um, that's, again, talk to people. Um, you know, if you don't feel comfortable talking to your family, which is real common, you know, you come talk to the law enforcement, come talk to the credit union if you need to, again, or your other financial institution. Uh, check credit reports annually. Uh, James already went over that. The legit website, annualcreditreport.com. That's where you can get that free copy of your uh, um, credit report from each of the three credit bureaus uh, per year. So it's kind of good. Space it out, you know, one every four months maybe. And... Uh, 
This is, well, yeah, that, that last one, I mean, take action immediately. We said that if something happens, just talk, like take action, try to make sure that you're doing everything that you need to do. Because so we get folks that come in and they don't realize that their computer might be full of viruses or, you know, their, their account's been compromised and money could be come out any day, in any, any moment. Um, here's uh, some numbers right here. And... I don't know if y'all want to write that down or not. I'll leave that up for a minute, and then I'll switch it over. We're done. Do y'all have questions? <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. What is it? I think it's one. It's every five years, I believe. Y'all know that five-year robo that do not call uh, site. I, I, I think it's five years. Yeah, I think it's, it's five years that you can do that. Um, and it, but it doesn't completely work. I mean, I know I've signed up for it, and I get them daily. Yeah, it's. No, it's it's kind of like what James was saying. There's a lot of. Uh, um, uh, they're trying to make things, robocalls illegal, and hopefully something like that will happen. It's, it's the biggest step that's been taken towards trying to, because they really serve no purpose now. Or at least that's my opinion. I don't know. Maybe somebody who uh, owns a business that does the robocalls would say differently, but there's so many other ways to reach out to prospective. Yes. That's the same thing with junk mail. Is robocall the same thing as potential spam? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's, that could be a real person. It's all those numbers but you get. It's yeah. Yeah. yeah most uh, most calling apps on your phone do a good job of marking those now. Like AT and T built into their phones, I believe, marks the potential spam if you use the the Google Call app or whatever it is. A lot of them are really good at saying uh, potential spam or suspect call. I've seen all that kind of stuff. Yes. Most yeah. times for me, if somebody calls me that isn't a contact in my phone, I don't answer it. And learn how to block it. Too. They'll leave a message. Yeah. Or, yeah. It's, or send a text message if they actually know me, which is what most people do now. But. Yeah, there's a lot of it. I know with like an iPhone. Yeah. 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 That's, that's true. That is a risk. But if, 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 you, if you're expecting, potentially expecting a call from something like that, you know, you answer and it's not who you're expecting, just you hang up. And you all know, too, that uh, there's a lot of things that get out there. Um, uh, if you have a loved one that passes away, I mean, we see that a lot with, the, um, you know, your spouse passes away and there's an obituary. There's a good chance that you might, that information's out there and they're going to come and try to uh, attack you. Maybe not right away, maybe six months later. Um, you know, just be careful of the information that you put out there. Yes, ma'am. Lisa. <laughs> yeah, I just had a uh, member tell me yesterday that uh, he didn't realize there's a um, fraudulent money coming out of his account every month. And he thought it was his wife doing something every month. So he finally asked her about it a year later. <laughs> and she said, no, I didn't know anything about that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, just it's review, ask, and yeah, that's the best thing you can do. And there's, uh, um, yeah, you got a lot of resources there to help you. Well, yeah, we we should probably wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get out right, of here. Uh, but the, yeah, yeah go ahead. I want to thank each one of you for coming. Uh, this is the small one. We're gonna try to maybe build on this one to have something bigger. Uh, but we will need your help, you know, when you go out there, you go home, talk to some folks who remember the talk uh, uh, acronym we had there. Just talk to folks about scam and all this stuff and, and share the world. Uh, I have my, my business card. If anybody wants to talk, you know, you can call me and, and, and we'll, we'll figure things out. He has to talk to. We all have our cards. Thank you all for coming.